Hello YouTube, welcome back. In this video, we'll continue exploring PowerShell and this one's about hash tables. You might ask what's a hash table? It's basically a dictionary from in other programming languages. But this ordered and unordered dictionaries, um, a hash table in general is an unordered dictionary. Ordered hash tables have the keyword ordered in them when you declare them. Ordered dictionaries were introduced in PowerShell 3, which is a while ago. And uh, the way you declare a hash table is similar to the way you declare lists instead you use curly braces we'll have a closer look at that uh, in a moment the other major difference with lists for hash tables is they've got key value pairs so each of your list value has a key associated with it and you can use the key to to manipulate or to access these values without further ado let's dive in i'll create an empty hash table this is how you would do that if i print hash it won't print anything but if I give it that and now it's it prints um, color number and shape now to make this an ordered hash table I just add uh, square brackets with the word ordered in here and they become ordered lists basically ordered lists give you um, a little more control so ordered hash tables if I print them the keys will appear in a certain order so you see how here you have color number shape and here number shape color you can order them so that they're displayed in a certain order and let's if I do dollar hash and let's say I want to see all the keys I could do dollar hash keys and it tells me what are all the keys and similarly values and it tells what what are all the values that exist uh, within that hash table now I could also access the value let's say I want to see what's in number and it should print one this is what I was talking about accessing values using keys so this is how you do that uh, it also has the count function which tells you how many key value pairs are there this is saying that there's three key value pairs in this particular dictionary and if I have um, well you know I could have so if I go back to changing this I could have another number equals 10 instead of ordered I'll just make it unordered I've got something wrong okay so you see how uh, earlier I got the comma wrong I have to use uh, semicolon now if I put two keys with the same uh, value uh, it's gonna complain about that see duplicate keys so you can't have the same keys multiple times in the same dictionary um, variable or in the same hash table so I'm just gonna change that to count but remember we have a function called count so if I do dollar hash now if I do dollar hash dot count uh, it's gonna print 10 but that's not the count the count of earlier when we did the count it was four because we have four key value pairs now how do you resolve the situation there is a solution to this uh, you have a special PS base, PS base dot count, and that should be full. So remember this: when you have conflicting key names with any other functions, built-in functions for dictionaries, um, you could use the PS base to um, to get the value, right? But it's a good practice to not use keywords in uh, as keys in a dictionary. Uh, but you know if you already have a situation like that this is how you go around that now you could also access dollar hash now you remember how we did numbers here like zero one two three for for lists now you could do same thing shape oh, probably uh, I need single quotes or double quotes yeah so now it prints the shape is square because that's what I've got in the shape here right so this is another way of accessing key value uh, the values of different keys within the variable you could also add uh, another like for example my dollar hash at the moment has four keys I could add to that using dollar hash and I can just say now equals to get date right oh, again so I gotta I gotta have this as a string so now if I do dollar hash 
it should print it should have a new there it is it's got now and it's got time in there right that's how you can add to it uh, the other way of adding is you do dollar hash dot add and you could add um, what do we add so I could say size I don't learn from my mistakes apparently size so size is uh, 100 so I'm using a function called add so that's why I'm just passing two parameters one for key and one for value and now if I print hash it should have a new parameter called size and that's how you add stuff to it now if you want to remove you follow the same pattern dot remove want to get rid of size right size and close bracket and hash there we go the size is gone so that's how you you would use um, hash tables there's a few other things you could do we did this with everything so I'm probably gonna do this again so I'm gonna say in a variable called P I'm gonna create a so I'm just gonna type that so I'm gonna say create create a dictionary object PowerShell and I'm just saying get process PowerShell and in the next one I'm gonna say notepad and create a process notepad so I don't have notepad open so I'm just gonna open it up so if I do this now dollar P is going to have two objects right one is PowerShell which is the key that one and the second is notepad which is also the key and I'm just doing get process so it's got system diagnostic process PowerShell and notepad so you could create um, hash tables with dotnet objects or, or you know like the windows process objects or service objects or, or anything for that matter um, if you want to add something to it like if you want to add another uh, value to this and let's say I'm just gonna do a WinRM start status so I'm gonna add a service WinRM and now if I do dollar $P it's got the status of WinRM service which is basically your WinRM status uh, get service WinRM dot status and the status is running it's great to see that you made it to the end of the video if you'd like to download all my knowledge as a zip file hit the subscribe button to download it as a tarball use like or share button.